Today I'd like to talk about a new toy I've got. Um, it took quite a while to get here. Unfortunately, paperwork got messed up and ATF and the U.S. Postal Service conspired against me. So after about 10 months yesterday, I finally got to pick up my short barrel Uzi. This is a semi-auto gun. Um, it fires from a closed bolt. Um, it's physically almost identical to an actual full auto Uzi. You can tell one, one easy giveaway is it has a, a slot in the bolt where the blocking bar goes. Um, but I picked it up last night and uh, got a chance to test fire it real quick this morning. Didn't really get didn't get a real good chance to really get into it, but it was mainly just to kind of go out and run some rounds through it and have some fun with it. Um, definitely a completely different manual of arms from what I'm used to. Um, I'm mainly an AR guy. I've got an AC556, so I'm kind of somewhat familiar with the Mini-14, uh, which is similar to AK-47 design as far as manual of operations. Um, the Uzi is definitely taking some getting used to. A um, few things, definitely, obviously it's got the uh, the magazine catch. It's down here at the heel, or on the grip, so it's a little bit, not quite as, it's not something you can drop with your, with your firing hand. You basically have to reach up, grab it, pull the magazine out, and then grab another magazine, reinsert. Um, magazines are 25 rounders, and then I've got quite a few of the 32 rounders. Um, as far as feeding, it did really good. I didn't have any trouble with the feeding. Of, I shot some 115 grain and some uh, 147 grain hollow points, and it did a really good job with all of those. Um, I had a few issues, actually quite a few issues, with ejection. It was giving me basically like a stovepipe jam. <coughs> um, I'm not really sure what the cause of that was, and the funny thing is it actually seemed worse with the suppressor on it, which seems to be counterintuitive because normally when you have a suppressor you have more gas flow back, gives you better cycling. Um, and then the other thing is when it does get the stovepipe jam, when you tilt to the side, it's kind of tough to clear the jam because I'm used to basically, basically being able to just rack the bolt on it and it kicks out the empty, knocks the live out. Well, a lot of times in this jam it's actually already feeding a live round into the chamber, so if you're just to pull the bolt back, it kicks out the empty, gets it out of the way, but there's still a live round almost in the chamber, and then you let go of the bolt and tries to load another one from the magazine. So it was it was causing us some troubles, um, as you'll be able to see from the shooting videos. But uh, we basically just shot it with some steel, some steel silhouettes up fairly close, and then we shot just some shots into the dirt burn, just kind of hear the subsonic rounds. Uh, Accuracy-wise, I mean, I was I was picking off little small pieces of trash out of 35 yards um, pretty easily. Um, sights are pretty rudimentary; it's just simple. It's an L-type. Flip rear peep sight gives you 100 and 200 yard, or probably meter, uh, apertures. Um, but it seemed to shoot dead onto the sights. Uh, I might have fit up with the uh, with the metal collapsible stock, <coughs> which is nice, cool, compact, uh, folds out, folds in and out pretty quick and easy. Um, the uh, it's a little tough to get a good cheek weld on it. Basically, when you get down on it, you've got to press your cheek pretty hard into the into the metal stock. I also have a wooden stock, which is what the gun was originally designed to use. Um, it takes a little bit of work to take some parts out of it and swap it over. Um, I did not shoot it that way, but it is very comfortable. I think if I ever get to use the gun for competition or anything like that, I would probably swap out to the wooden stock just because it's considerably more comfortable. Um, basic mode of operation, take magazine, which this one is empty, load it in the gun, smacks in, even completely fully loaded, they, they, they lock in place pretty well. Um, rack the bolt back and let go. On a full auto gun, they fire from an open bolt, so when you rack the bolt back, the bolt actually stays locked back. So this is a little bit different. There's also no bolt hold open, um, which you can see as I demonstrate my wonderful trigger flinch when I fire on an empty chamber. Um, it does have a grip safety similar to 1911, and basically that blocks the sear. And then also it looks like a firing pin block on the bolt, I noticed. <coughs> um, it would appear that maybe that grip safety also controls that, so if your sear does somehow release and your firing pin falls, uh, the firing pin is not able to protrude from the face of the bolt to fire around. Uh, your safety switch is on the side here, back is safe, forward is semi, um, unfortunately there's no third marking. Um, it's a 10, I believe a 10 and a quarter inch barrel, and the barrel is very quick to remove, replace if for any reason you hadn't desired to. Basically you push down this barrel locking catch right here, unscrew the barrel nut, Barrel nut comes off, barrel comes out right there. Very easy to clean, however you want to clean it. Um, the way that I shot it mostly, you'll see in the video later on, is I have a Thompson Machine ISIS 9 9mm suppressor, and it's designed to use Gemtech multi-mount uh, rear mounts, so I bought a Gemtech multi-mount Uzi adapter, which basically slips over your barrel, 
threads on, and locks in place. Uh, overall length is about like having about a 17 inch barrel. Um, the suppressor is all aluminum. The adapter is, I believe, steel and stainless steel, maybe some aluminum in there as well. So the, the balance is still pretty well towards the center of the gun. Um, that's the thing, it's a very heavy gun. I was really surprised. I don't actually have any weights for it, but um, it doesn't look like much because it's mainly stamped sheet metal and a little bit of plastic, but it's a pretty it's a pretty chunky little thing. Um, it's a lot of fun to shoot, <coughs> very light recoil. Um, as you can see, you can you can shoot it pretty quick. Um, I'll also include a video from uh, just a week ago where I had a chance to shoot one full auto, and I put several magazines through it. Um, had a lot of fun with that. Kind of makes this one not seem as not as much fun, but um, it is a good gun. Um, once I think once I get the cycling issues figured out, maybe I just need to, uh, maybe need to work on the hand loads a little bit because I believe about probably about two thirds or more of the ammo that we shot today were all my hand loads and they were subsonic loads that were pretty much an experiment with a different powder so I kind of loaded them pretty close to starting load so I might need to kick them up just a little bit <clears throat> I definitely want to get 100% reliability I did shoot some uh, uh, Winchester white box 147 grain jacketed hollow points and they fed functioned through it perfectly I also shot some of uh, the uh, Federal American Eagle 147 grain subsonic and it shot and fed and I know the tourniqueted cone sometimes doesn't want to feed through Uzi's from what I understand but it, uh, it did a very good job and it cycled just fine. So I would say it's definitely a hand loading issue. I think maybe just need to kick up the powder just a little bit. Uh, the big heavy bolt and the Uzi made me, made me a little bit more, a little bit more ump to get it moved back properly. Um, other than that, other than the stove pipes, it seemed to function really well. Uh, triggers kind of long and heavy, um, but when you're shooting fast, you don't really notice it. So uh, I definitely like shooting with the suppressor on it. It's a lot of fun. We did shoot some subsonic loads without the suppressor. And it was really surprisingly quiet. Um, obviously, it's considerably quieter than a pistol with a 10-inch barrel. Plus, it's just, uh, I don't know, it just seems seems pretty fun. But it, I think it'll definitely get shot a good majority of the time with the suppressor with subsonic loads. Uh, if I do competition or something like that, I may kick it up using full power loads in case I have to knock down steel plates or something like that. Future plans, I would like to get another top cover for it and mount a small short rail and then put a small uh, red dot on there. Because I definitely think that would help with shooting it faster, shooting a lot more fun. I uh, may look into getting another four in and figuring out how to mount or just buy one of the ones that already has a, a thick tiny rail mounted on it. Put a little small vertical foregrip on there, just get something else to hang on to. Maybe a sling. I actually have a factory Israel Israeli sling, and I installed it onto the sling, sling mounts here and here. And by the time I got it looped around me, it basically hung about right here. <laughs> so it really was uh, not very useful. It would look kind of cool to throw it over your shoulder and carry it, but as far as actually using it, not much use. I'm actually thinking maybe just a single point sling on the rear swivel there. It might work out better than anything. Not that I really need it while it sits in the gun safe or goes to the range, but it's always nice to have a sling. I always say a rifle without a sling is like a pistol without a holster. And since I make holsters, you can tell that that's pretty important to me. So, with that, I think that's about all I've got to say. And we will go on to the shooting video, and hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot.
little better without the suppressor on it. Yeah? Just surprise it. There's like a top of that. Yeah.